This episode of the Guna Ramble is sponsored by the new sporting betting app called Bookie. That's B-O-O-K-E-E. Sign up using the promo code podcast, deposit and bet £10 in multiple bets for a free £10 bet. Please bet responsibly. Hello and welcome to another edition of the Green Around the Podcast. I'm your host, Giles, and joining me today are Akil. How you doing, mate? You good? <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'm great, mate. I'm absolutely <laughs> wonderful, yeah. <laughs> it's, 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 it's buzzing, yeah? Well, I've had a week of, I'm working in an operational environment. I mean, I suppose was has had similar issues. Snow and cold and freezing temperatures and all that rubbish, and then thought I'll go to the Arsenal for a bit of relief on was it last Wednesday Thursday night and yeah it was worse I'd rather have been on site somewhere in the cold in PPE to be honest but <laughs> there we go there you are and it was, we also got was on the line how you doing mate you good hello mate I'm alright yeah just, mm. just just about thawed out from, from yesterday and I mean yeah. my brain ain't thawed out from the week we've had football wise it's just um, yeah but Thankfully, I'm finally starting to feel my fingers again and my toes, but <laughs> at least uh, at least my mouth still works, so I can. Yeah, yeah, good stuff. Um, yeah, I didn't know how to frame this, guys. I mean, I, I gave you both the synopsis of, of 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 what I thought we could talk about, but I just I didn't know how to start it. I didn't know, you know, what topics to sort of discuss or or, or lay out first. So really and truly, uh, I first want to get a feeling of, of, of where you are with the club. So I will start with you, Axe. Where are you? with the club right now uh well it's it's uh, probably where most people are really isn't it? it it's it's a strange time um maybe some people got here a lot quicker than i did really but i'm at a stage where now you know when the second or third goal went in yesterday or thursday it, I didn't really, I didn't feel much. I didn't really, I actually kind of applauded the goal. I thought David Silva, second goal, I thought that bit, you know, Mustafi got done like a kipper in, and it, it, it reminded me of Henri Pires, Jumberg making the run, you know, it was all that, the, the Burkham days. It was, I didn't really feel much. And even at Wembley, I don't know, it was second goal, third goal went in, didn't really feel much. Started emptying out. Um, you know, we had uh, at Wembley, we had about four rows of ten, so we had about forty of us, all friends. You know, we've been booked kind of the same rows, mm. um, and I think there was only about three of us left at the end. Um, and, and well, four of us left, and two were with me, so they couldn't leave without me. Mm. So actually, mm. it was only me and old Jeezy P's Ricky left, <laughs> um, and it was just. Uh, Jeez, like you know, I mean, on on one hand, you look at that and think, well, that's our first final. We've 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 lost that well, first game. We've lost at Wembley, you know, in in terms of a neutral kind of uh, ground. Not it's our worst heard. loss. It's our but worst, it's our worst loss. But it's our it's our only loss. And you think on yeah. that hand, you think, well, we were due one, but it's not really about that, is it? It's just about the level of performance and the the just that you know, it, it was just so flaky and so just. Uh, like you know, you, you saw nothing in that game. You know, I, I can think of this season, right? And you know, we, we lost three one to Man United at, at home, but you came out of that game still feeling yeah, okay. You know what? We lost that game, but you know what? We turned up. We we played. You know, if if it wasn't for a, a, for a, if it was a Alexi Sanchez, we might have been two two. So it, it, you you there's been games like that when we've lost Man City away again. You know, you had that potential offside and then you know all that kind of stuff we we were too hard we had the chance you still felt we were in that game but these two games against City this week have just been you know I think it's just shown how how the level has changed Man City are are the best team I've seen since the Arsenal kind of invincible all time and 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 it's just shown that well, it's shown where we are, really. You know, I'm kind of looking at Liverpool, looking at Spurs, who are on good runs and thinking, yeah, we're nowhere near there. Yeah, we might play them at home and we might beat them the odd time or we might get a draw, but really, we're just we're just nowhere there. So that that's where I am now. I'm I'm at a stage where, you know, I, I totally I, you know, I've always loved the manager. I always loved the players because it's the sort of person I am. But I just think it's time to kind of rip everything up. 
um, and and start again. Really, you know, I'd, I think it was Pep Guardiola's notes that ran onto the field yesterday. But if it was Arsenal's notes, that would have been fine because I think we do have to start again. So that's where I am. Uh, was where are you, mate? I mean, yeah. we speak a lot offline, you know, about. You know, we we pull our hair out about you know we're exasperated about you know where Wenger has taken you us or got us now, yeah, mm, yeah. <laughs> you know, um, and, and then we come online and we have to sort of like almost part ourselves up and be on our best behaviour and try and be as philosophical and as constructive as possible. But really and truly, honestly speaking, from the heart, was where are you now with this club? For, for me, mate, I've I've gone past a. Uh, sort of the anger. I think the the players' performances of late sort of sum up the way I'm feeling. I mean, they're, they're sort of, they're disillusioned. I think there's a lack of self-belief. I think there's a severe lack of confidence. I mean, me as a fan, I mean, when I listen to Akil speak and, and hear how he's feeling, especially I know how positive he always has been, it really hits home that you, you, this, this is too much now. And, and for me, the other night, much like Ak said, that it just felt that it was heartbreaking and it, it, it for me I stand there as a fan and, and I'm always very passionate and I'm still getting involved and I get shouting my head off at little things and the ref and every little decision because that's the way I enjoy my football but it comes to a stage where I'm not actually particularly enjoying it anymore and, and, and we've spoke for years about the club and, and, and the direction we're going in and and remember we had this conversation probably well it was at the start of last pre-season probably or just after talking about the seesaw and the, the yeah. thing I, and I felt like I was sat smack bang in the middle of the Arsenal being a seesaw and it, it could go one way and we could be right back up the top again and we're looking at Sanchez and Ozil staying and new deals and, and players coming in or it could go the other way and, and for me unfortunately it feels like I mean I'm the fattest person in the world and I've gone <laughs> right to the deck do you know what I mean mm. and, and it's it, I, don't, I don't feel like anything can get any lower and I've, I've come to the the only thing that is giving me hope is the the kind of things that have happened behind the scenes I think that Ivan Gazidis is starting to get control you've seen people like Raul come in and and, and, and the guy from Dortmund and uh, Sven and, and you're seeing changes happen behind the scenes and there is action plan and there is Josh Conkery back in people are getting involved now and, and I think that is unfortunately only come to the fore because of what is happening and they've missed out on Champions League they're realising hang on a minute this ain't happening again like, oh, we're going to miss out again as it stands and and it, it took us to get this low for the club to to, to get into action and, and that's my main issue that it's all reactive nothing's proactive at Arsenal it's all reactive it's all oh we're going to try and keep hold of Alexis oh bollocks Alexis is gone let's get a Bamiang like, it's, it's, it's all everything sort of on the backward step whereas you see other clubs like City and yes they've got massive investment but they're proactive they're building the best youth academy in the world they've they've employed the best manager in the world they're sensational to watch I mean like Akil said the, the applauding the goal I mean even that the third goal yeah, it was really I mean the move it was yeah. just absolutely astonishing and like he alluded to it was like watching Invincibles I just had to stand there and I had to applaud because you have to realise that we're watching a special team there. And I don't think we were great. We were nowhere near great. And you can see the massive difference. I'm sure we'll talk about it, but they were fantastic. But as a whole, as Arsenal Football Club, and the way I feel about it at the moment, mate, I feel as low as I ever could. And I never say I'd fall out of love with football because it, it means everything to me. I love it. I live, I work. I'm out, like Ax said, out in the snow, bloody working on the roof to afford to be able to go to the game. Do you know what I mean? And it's... Mm. it's it's something I'd never want to change and the social side of it. But and that's another thing, actually, that hurt me at midweek is understand the weather and all that. But I'm telling you now, if we were three points off the top and they were top, that place Rammed. would have been full. It would have been full to yeah, the whatever. Yeah. Spot on. Yeah. People, I would, I would have gone there on skis if I had to. Do you yeah. know what I mean? But I thought to myself, do you know what was? Let's go down there, go to the pub, we'll have a few beers, got to the pub, no one there. Absolutely no one there. None of, my, none of the regular people I, I go with and one or two people and, and, and there's guys like my mate Bri who's been going for years and years and years and he's been for everything 30, 40 years and he's there but that aside it just it was it was, it was painful in that side of things because mm. it's not just for me the football is not always just about what's happening on the pitch it's about the social side of things and I just feel that the club at the moment has been driven to a state where 
it is so horrible in the stadium. It's horrible to be in. The players are getting so much abuse. It's, it's not enjoyable. Nothing about the game is enjoyable. And, and that's just the football side of things. And as I say, even when the social side of things takes a hit, it really starts getting you down about it. But I won't give up. Of course, I won't give up. And I still think Arsenal are in a brilliant position to kick on. Even still, even with all this, we've still got as a, the basis of a, a superb squad. I genuinely do believe that. And I think that We've kept the money dry. We've spent minus whatever fourteen million transfer wise. We've we've incri- like wiped the wage bill, and I think we're set up to go again. But these next sort of three four months for me are the biggest three four months that we could possibly have, probably in the last fifteen years, and probably in the next twenty, because we've got to make the right decisions here. And I'm not saying we'll have a manager for the next twenty years. We might have to go through three or four, but we've got to be clever. And we've got to take a risk. We have to do it to keep up with the pace. But, yeah, I'm a bit, I'm very, very down, if I'm honest at the moment about it, mate. Very just down. To, I'm, just, I'm, I'm not angry anymore. I'm not angry. Yeah, go on, X. Yeah. I was just going to say about Woz's point, because I, I totally agree, that if we were three points off the top, it would have been full or, or whatever. But if you remember about, I don't know, it was, I think I got engaged actually around that time, so I should know. 2014, there was a tube strike. We played um, Newcastle, I think it was, on a Monday night. It was around mid-April. So, okay, fine. Weather-wise, you can, it was completely different. But there was a tube strike. Um, uh, TFL were advising everyone to make their trips by 7 o'clock or whatever it was. There was no tubes, tubes after the game. That game, I think, was sold out, and and it, it probably was about fifty five thousand in that ground. We we weren't we weren't you know chasing a league or anything like that in April. I mean, when when have we chased a league in April in the last few years? But you know, we were maybe second, third, something like that. We were comfortable. We might have been in the cup. Well, we would have been in the cup, um, two thousand fourteen. So people made the effort. You know, I don't know how people got home that day. I remember I, I sort of got a taxi back with a few people because that was the only way. So. People, I think, I think on th- on Thursday night, it, 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 it was it it was because of the weather and it was because it was cold and it was because there was trains not there. But I think people were looking for any excuse not to go, really. And I think I, 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 I yeah. think that was a genuine excuse. But I think if if there was something in it, if we were playing well, people would have changed. People would have would have found a way. They would have they would have driven through the conditions. They would have done something. You know what I mean? But. It was very easy just to think, ah, there's no trains, it's yeah. pretty cold, give it a miss. Yeah. I tell you, you're, you're both obviously right, because Man City, what, 14 points clear of the rest of the competition, 16 points clear or something like that of the rest of the yeah, competition. Yeah. They, their, whole, their whole allocation was What's sold taken? out and they're yeah. coming down. They, they came from Manchester, not the other side of London yeah, where I'm hanging out, they yeah. came from Manchester. Yeah. And you're right, if we were three points off the top, the place would have been packed to the rafters. Yeah. I think, you know, I looked around. I looked around the stadium uh, on Thursday night, and I saw the empty seats. And it took me back to. I mean, I was too young then, but I remember when people were saying the last, the dying days of the Terry Neal era, where there were like half empty stadiums and nobody could be bothered, and that feeling of apathy and what it does to you. And I think it showed the strength of feeling that. And Sunday after the third goal on, on uh, in the cup final, when people started to stream out with 25 minutes of football left to play, yeah, yeah. I think those two images. It, it, it kind of are, are burnt in my mind and it, and, it, and it tells me that the strength of feeling within this fan base is that there's no more fighting I mean I'm, I, there might be a couple of instances I don't know but generally the fight's kind of out of us this whole saga has taken the fight out of us the belief out of us it's I'm talking to people now and I'm saying are you going to Milan and people are like well, I don't know man can't be you asked know, no. can't, I can't be asked it was that you know I, I, I might well, I, I just in preparing for this podcast, I just watched kind of the sort of game again, and just to listen to the, what the pundit said. And then Jamie Carragher basically talked about it, and what you've just said about that last year there was planes flying over, people mm. fighting, it was protests, and he said I, I didn't quite like that because that's just you know he's thinking of it from an ex-player point of view, I suppose. Um, but he said this game was worse. This game was just yeah. people not caring. This it was it was just it was completely worse, and that's what you're saying about. There's no yeah. fights anymore. People just aren't as interested, and that yeah. that's a lot worse. And just coming back to you know where you are, you know it, it was I when when Alexis Sanchez went, I, I was fairly pleased. I thought it was it was time for him to go. I, 
things I'd heard from the training ground. He wasn't a very good influence. And people say you don't need to get on with your work colleagues and stuff. I think if it gets to a breaking point, like potentially has with the manager, but not in that way. I don't think anyone really hates the manager. Players don't hate the manager. But if they've stopped believing in him, that's also the same. That's breaking point. But... Um, when when he went and we signed Mkhitaryan and Aubameyang, it, it did excite me a little bit. You know, after that Everton game, it did excite me. Like I thought, well, this is this could be this could be really good. But a couple of games sort of back, and it's just that excitement's dead. You know, it's completely dead. It's not like when we signed Mesut Ozil in 2013 or whenever it was, and the excitement. It went on for about five months. Aaron Ramsey had that great season and, you know, it, it, it went on. Whereas this is just, you can sign two players, two big players as well, yet it's still not getting us exciting. And I think that that's really does sum it up where we are as as a club. I think, you know, um, when we think about the Alexis saga and, you know, people were abdomen that he was, he was a single boy, really. he was the main you know, um, antagonizer. We think about Alex Iwobi and him raving within curfew hours or outside of, you know, w- w- you know, outside of uh, club rules. We think of Akpom pranging his car and his dad thinking he died, uh, you know, from a drink driving accident. We think of all the incidences, the, 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 the whatever the, 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 whatever happened at half time at Anfield, you know, uh, all these incidences. It, to me, it means it, all these things mean that there's a lot. There's something much deeper than the individuals going on. It's it's much deeper than Alexis Sanchez disrupting everything. It's much deeper than you know uh, Alex Iwobi being late and 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 not showing you know uh, and not and not really sort of like grasping the fact that he's been he's in a privileged position. There's a lot deeper than that, and it all comes down to how. These players are being managed, coached, the discipline, the code of conduct, you know, everything's, it, it, it's rotten, you know, it, it really is rotten. And I feel like, you know, I think Martin Keown said on, on, on Five Live that he knew when it was his time to go. Wenger tapped him on the shoulder and he said, look, you know, Martin, it's time. And Martin said he, you know, he felt ready. He knew he felt ready. The club arranged a testimonial, and he was, and it was an excellent way to to exit. And you know, he went about his ways. And he said, but who's ready to? Who's the one that's going to tap Arsenal on the shoulder and tell him, it, you know, this is it's time. Enough's enough. I mean, somebody's got to be somebody within that hierarchy's got to be big enough to throw in the towel, you know, um, and make the hard decision. I, I would know, love um, to know what, you know, he has lunch with David Dean, dinner with David Dean every time they yeah. win or where. I would love to know what David Dean's telling him, you know, whether he's privately is telling him what we're all saying or if he's playing lip service. I don't know. I just, I would love to be a fly on the wall on a conversation there. The, the thing is though, Rex, the thing is, Rex, J- Jeremy Wilson said in the Telegraph that you know the club are going to review as they always do at the end of every season and they'll take a view from there this year they haven't got the time there's four weeks in the transfer window this summer because of the World Cup and the fact that you know the, the clubs voted for the, the window to shut before the league started I think so you're thinking if they prepare if they if they come to a decision that okay it's time for him to go they haven't got a lot of day there's hardly any time there's hardly any time to bring in a new and you know, and 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 have him in and and bring in the players that he requires, you know. So I'm thinking, okay, so if that's not the case. Is it the case that we're going to keep him on, Wenger on for another season to see out his contract? And then that makes you think, well, we're slipping away, we're falling down, you know, year on year now. How far away we're going to be by the end of next season? You know, which is the better route to take? Was I mean, is it you know? Do you know what I mean? You know, if they're mm. if they if they're gonna if they're gonna fire him, they need to fire him as soon as and and probably line that the next guy up from now. Yeah, well, you know? I, I, I'm I'm inclined to agree with you. I, I just don't see, I don't see what we can possibly. Achieve. I understand we're still in the Europa League and things, but I just don't see things getting better. And and even if we do manage to win the Europa League, I'd, I'm still very much of the opinion that, and I think a lot of people will be that. Things need to change, and you you can't go and get beat so convincingly by your rivals, and then lose to Ostersunds, and then get smashed in the cup final, then get 
be three 0 down at home by half time. No matter who you're playing, we're we're Arsenal Football Club, and and it's got to the stage now where I think the players have completely given up, and I think they've down tools. And this is why I, I think I've been very naive in my criticisms of a lot of players and. And I'm talking, I'm not, yeah, but I'm not just talking about, I think, I think this has been going on for a good 12 to 18 months. I genuinely do think that there's been issues within that dressing room and with Wenger and with training and with performances for a lot longer than just the last sort of few months. And I I think that it's time for everyone, and I'm I'm more guilty than anyone of, of, of slaying players, but I think that when when Arsene Wenger does leave and whoever's left at the club, that every single player to a man needs a clean slate and, and, and they need to be judged on what happens in the future rather than what has happened over the last six months. Because I'll tell you something now, there's some bloody good footballers at this club that are going to be driven out the door by by our fans at the moment. And, he's, and I don't blame them because the performances have been poor and we've seen what's happening on the pitch. But I think the issues are so, so much deeper. And, and like you say not just for the preparation for the following season. I think for for all our players, I think that if it is going to happen, and maybe they do know already, maybe they already know it's going to happen. Maybe Arsenal's playing a game with the press and and, and they secretly know behind closed doors. I don't know, but I just think it'd be better for everyone if if the monkey's off the back and they can relax and get on with the game and and, and things can go back to normal and there's some fresh ideas in, some fresh routines and, and, and we start looking like a football team again because... I think for everyone's sake, for the fans' sake, for Arsenal's sake, and, and I'm not just talking about Arsenal. I mean, if Arsenal wants to go to a future job, I think it'd be better for him now to, to cut ties and, and to have a few months to refresh himself and, and good luck to him and go on again. But I think we need to do it now. Will we do it now? No, no chance. No chance at all. But I genuinely would. He's got to that stage where I genuinely would have anyone till the end of the season, and it, I'd, I'd have you, Giles. I'd have you, Akil. I'd just have something just to refresh the club, to 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 make us feel like we we're going in a direction again because it's gone so so far past the past the line. We've been low, and we've bounced back and won cups. Yeah, we won three FA Cups in four years. That's great, but the reality is, over 38 game seasons, we're underperforming massively. I mean, in Europe, we're getting further and further away. And as the closest we've been was in 2005, and, and that was with our greatest side ever. So things aren't improving. They're not on the up. They're they're not even stagnant anymore. They're they're rapidly declining. And I, I agree with you. I think that for for a lot of reasons, it has to happen sooner rather than later. But I mean, I I think only if if we do lose on Sunday, and obviously, blimey, I I can't understand it when people say I want us to lose a game. So things happen. That's absolute rubbish. I want to win every game. Arsenal yeah. player. That's a joke. I don't care. But if, if if something does happen on Sunday, we don't get a result. They m- genuinely might have to be forced into it then, because it, as much as I want to give Arsenal a shot at winning the Europe a European trophy with a club and things like that, I don't think it's good for us, mate. And I think we do have to be. I think sentimental value has to go out the window, and I think if we're yeah. serious, we have to do it now, mate. I'm afraid. Um, Actually, coming back to you, um, you know. Uh... You could see that the, I don't know if the players have down to it. I just think that it's a different, it's a confidence thing, it's a mentality thing. Um, they try, but psychologically they're very, very brittle. Um, and, I, and I'm sure that they, I'm sure the Wenger and the coaches, they try, they try with them. They, they do try with them in the training ground, but for one reason or another, it's just not sticking. Either, the, either what the, the the staff are, are are trying to teach them or show them. Isn't well, isn't well. Um, um, what's the word? Isn't well relayed, and it, or, or the players just can't receive. It. They're not receiving that information correctly because you know it's just it, it, it just it, it, it just looks it just looks fake when you see it on the playing field. It just looks fake, it, it, you know. And, and I do wonder, as I, as I said before, you know, I'm wondering, is it because of that? It's, there's a deeper, there's a deeper, deeper 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 rot inside the club and as was said you know it's time that somebody steps up whether it's josh whether it's ivan or whoever or whether it's david d to actually say look you know it's the time has come yeah i 
I don't I don't really agree with the motion that they've down tool as such or anything like mm. that. I just think yeah. you know, like I I just make maybe I'm just very naive, but I do I do think players care. I I do think mm. but I just think they're just they're shot of confidence and they just don't they've got such a big lack of belief potentially in themselves, potentially in the manager, potentially in the coaching style, I don't know, but that to me just looks like a team shot. I mean, you, you look at that team. I was actually looking at that team in the second half yesterday and thinking, you know, players, I know Wilshire wasn't there yesterday, but Wilshire and Ramsey look like they, you know, they look like they do care. Like Mesut Ozil, I know people will, 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 will kind of talk about his style and stuff, but for me, you know, he's such a big player that he, he, he should care. You know, Petr Cech, such a professional, you know, he, he may not care for Arsenal as much as he cared for Chelsea, but I think he's such a professional that he'll care about himself. He'll, he'll want to do well. Lauren Koscielny's another. You know, you just feel that the, these players, they must care. I mean, we we probably all read that sort of article that was in The Guardian about the players having a meeting um, without Arsene Wenger led by a few sort of senior players. And sort of three or four years ago, those kind of meetings, when they happened, were led by Per Mertesacker, Petr Cech, Thomas Rosicki and Mikel Arteta. No, well, Mikel Arteta. So okay. two yeah. of them have gone. So you would think Cech and Mertesacker are still there. You would add Koscielny to that. And then, I don't know, maybe, maybe one more, maybe it was just them three, I, 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 I don't know, but you just, you just feel that there's, something's not right there, you know, there's, and what you're saying that is, I don't know, like that, that sort of discipline issue, I just, you know, you've got Steve Bold there, who, who, who looks like he's quite a mean, you know, you wouldn't want to get onto the wrong side of him, they've brought in Jens Lehmann as a coach. Jens Lehmann, yeah. You would think, yeah. Jens, I mean, you don't want to get on the wrong side of Jens, but, these players, you talk about Alex Awobi and, and, you know, kind of partying and Alexi Sanchez on the bench last year at Anfield when he was meant to be dropped, he was meant to be disciplined, he's there laughing. Um, you know, you, you, you talked about Akpom, but I'm sure there's others. You know, Ian Wright said yeah. recently about players calling in sick or needing to, to, to get coaches having to go to their houses or whatever. I don't know how true all that is, but, you know, um, right, he probably knows a lot more than us. So you just think, how does that happen at a football club like this? I mean, you you mentioned it earlier, but you're lucky boys. You're 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 you're, you're okay, forget that you're representing Arsenal because that's important to us, not to them. Um, maybe to Jack Wilshere, Carl Jenkinson, and such. But you're professional footballers. You know that's that that was our dream. You know, I, I I have no doubt that if any of us three could have been a professional footballer, we would have been one. Would have loved it. You know, and you just think. What what what's going on? What's going on? When Dennis Bergkamp came to this club, he he practiced even more, you know, and and he was that good. He he had made it, but he still practiced even more. And that's got nothing to do with managers or or coaches or because he had just come to the club. He doesn't know how it was run, but it was his own mentality. It was his own. I want to be the best, you know, and that drove him. And and that just doesn't happen now. Um. I'm not sure how we change that. I was talking to someone today who who's a big football fan and has done some work in football, but but isn't an Arsenal fan, and just said that you know we've talked about it a lot about leaders, but leaders not only lead on the pitch but they also lead off the pitch. And when Dennis Bergkamp came and did all this extra training, other players looked at him and thought, well, if we want to be there, we got to do this as well. So those leaders not only bring you know leadership qualities on the pitch, but it's off the field as well, and. Oh, yeah, I just, I really struggle, you know. When I, we spoke to Steve Bold on that 89 sort of night, mm. the way he spoke, he was so, uh, not forceful, but he, he, he had a presence, you know. It, when you, when he talked, you listened, like, you know, and, and you just think, is he not being allowed to do it? You know, is, is, you know, yesterday it was quite visible that second half Arsene Wenger wasn't up much. And I, I sort of got that, you know, I think it was, there was a lot of hostilities behind him. Him getting up brings negativity. I totally get that. But why isn't then Steve Bold out there? Because you think he's not going to get anything negative. People generally like Steve Bold, but nothing. Do you think, do you think, do you think, you know, when people say, oh, we need more ex players in the club, I think to myself, why, why? Under this regime, you've got, you've got Bold and Jens Lehmann, two massive yeah. characters in their time. And yeah. they're yes men. 
Yeah. So what do you think? I mean, I don't, I don't, I don't see, I don't, you know, the yeah, reason why yeah, Jim Henry yeah, or Tony Adams or or Tony uh, Ad, uh, uh, Martin Kent aren't there is because they're not yes men, and he wouldn't, he just don't, he, you know, he, he hasn't got time to cross swords with those kind of characters. So I just don't get the whole thing. Yeah, we should, he should have, you should have Burkamp beside him and Thierry Henry beside him. It just doesn't work. Like that. Um, um, was you've just mm. alerted me to uh, an exclusive? Tell us what that is. In the papers. Oh, yeah, yeah, not not my exclusive. <laughs> yeah. I've, uh, I've been having a little chat with Peter Hillwood um, just a minute. <laughs> now, yeah, I just I just see it pop up about um, it's an exclusive on the back page of the Sun tomorrow, and um, it's basically um, a quote from Peter Hillwood, and um, I'll read out what it says. It says regarding Arson, he has done fabulously well. It is just that he has overstayed his welcome, and that's obviously the man that brought Arson to the club and was involved in it and obviously we, we, we often give him a lot of stick Hillwood and and he isn't really the, the face of what he should be for what he does but I mean they're pretty strong words coming from someone in the hierarchy and I mean I think unfortunately it's coming to an end where no one wanted to see this happen to Arsene Wenger no one and, and I don't care who you are whether you protested or didn't protest or you, you Arsene Wenger for what he's done for this club has been absolutely fantastic and nobody wanted to see him forced out. But unfortunately, he genuinely has outstayed his welcome and it's, it's probably is a few years too late and I can understand why he wanted to stay on and, and all this stuff, like the transition to the Emirates, he 100% deserved the, the, the opportunity to see that through and, and he got the funds to spend and he brought in Ozil, we brought in Sanchez, we won the FA Cups, but then he failed and that's the long and short of it and that is when things should have changed but the club weren't set up and we're now here two years on after Leicester winning the league and Arsenal finishing second when every other club was in that transition phase that we should have been in every other club done it City done it Liverpool done it Spurs done it well Spurs had potch but they were they were up and coming Manchester United all of them were in a situation where they were going through that and us as a club we didn't react we allowed Wenger to continue in his role and I just personally think that these quotes are very strong coming out of the club and that means a lot with, with the situation. But I think with regards to Arsene, the, the, the bigger picture, I think he needs to accept in himself that football has unfortunately progressed. Maybe I wouldn't say beyond him. I just think that his, his styles and his way of thinking, I think football's changed a hell of a lot. And I think international He's management might be the... Yeah. yeah, but I also think I was having a great conversation with a guy behind me who I, I sit with and um, we always have great chats and we were talking about Jose Mourinho as well and we were sort of saying that I think his era of football has bypassed him. I genuinely do and I, and I, I know they're up, sound silly, they're up second in the league and all that, but it's not as effective as it used to be and it, it's, it's mad because at one stage Arson was untouchable out there and he, and he created this absolute monster of a team that were invincible and and then he continued on the shoestring budget with bang average players to get us in the Champions League 17 years in a row. But then it's almost as if all of a sudden the, the, the whole picture of football's changed, the TV money, everything, everything's amplified, the, the Russian money with Chelsea and, and City getting in millions, everything's changed, the, the scene has changed. And Mourinho was in on the first, at the start of that. But I mean, clubs, when Chelsea got money, that's peanuts now, really, when you look at what's happening. You're around the world, PSG and... And, and Man City's money football's gone on again another level and I think Wenger's sort of two levels behind where he was and unfortunately because he isn't accepting it it's coming to a stage now where the players are, uh, in a roundabout way I think are showing their not they dislike Wenger I wouldn't say that at all I just think that they probably feel it's time that things changed and, and the players are doing it in their own way whether they mean to or not it's just a lack of confidence and everything like we discussed but now you're hearing people out of the club come out and say quotes. In the, that, that's where it starts getting a bit messy for Arsene. And unfortunately, when he does them press conferences like the other day, where he says, who are you to question me? After 21 years, I've turned down every club in the world, all these things. I think that's where he needs to sort of take a step back and just say, look, maybe I need to realise the time is the time. Maybe I do need to accept that things do need to change. And, and then that really will be what's best for the club. And, I don't want it to get messy in the press with all these quotes from the hierarchy and all that. That's that's not what Arsenal needs and that's not what Arsenal deserves. But I think if he's not willing to accept it himself, that's going to be the way it's going to go, isn't it? 
you make some really good points there um was and acts you know coming on to that and just sort of like uh, extrapolating that a bit you know venga for whatever reason you know he said he, you know he turned down a lot of people when we switched stadiums he stayed loyal okay apparently the banks insisted that he had to stay for five years or whatever blah 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 whatever the case may be but he showed loyalty he changed the william formula you know when we had the invincibles we were playing great position our positional play was ahead of the rest you know we had the we had the physicality we had the speed we had the intelligence and whatnot he changed that he went with the project youth because of the austerity um, and, you know, you hear Peter Hill Wood, he was his staunchest defender. He was his staunchest ally, you know, after David Dean had gone, you know, thank you for the interest in our affairs, you know, blah, 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 all that sort of stuff. You know, he allowed Wenger to sort of become almost omni, uh, what's the word? Just, you know, omnipotent. You know, he became a, 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 a colossus within the club. He, you know, he, you know, they didn't, they didn't bring in anybody to replace David Dean, giving Wenger more. He became omni powerful. It got to a stage where, you know, nobody could sack him if they wanted to, you know, he went, he, he took us for a period of austerity. And then as soon as we got some money I mean, he kept us sort of like, Bobbing, you know, uh, above, uh, keeping ahead above water. As soon as we got that money, it's almost like, you know, as soon as the purse strings uh, opened, it's almost like he didn't know how to deal with it. You know, we belatedly got, you know, the, the, the big money. We we spent it on Oza. We spent it on Alexis. We started to play by players like Jacka and Mustafi and so on. And he's not really been able to manage it. You know, all those years where between 2005 and 2012, where he'd he'd managed on a stew string, he'd brought in these young players, he'd brought in like journeyman players and bit part players, and he'd always sort of like kept us, he'd, he'd kept us above, you know, in the top four. He'd made, the, you know, we continue to play really good football. As soon as the club decided, okay, we'll give you some more money, he's not. You know, he's not kept up with it. And as Ross said, you've got these younger managers, these younger coaches with new ideas. Um, and he's not really following. He, he, he's now being left behind by the likes of the, the Pochettino and, 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 and Guardiola and, and Klopp and whatnot. I mean, how do you view this, 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 this whole sort of second half of his tenure? Yeah, I, I break his tenure up into three usually. So 98 to 2006, you know, trophies galore. 2006 to probably about 2012, which was the Emirates Stadium project, Project Youth. And in that, just in that Project Youth, I think of one example at, it was probably, was probably, you, you'll probably remember as well. It was, it was April time again at Old Trafford. Um, we were, we were kind of in the title race then. I mean, you know, people forget maybe a little bit, but in those years, we weren't far off the top. We obviously all remember the Eduardo no. year, but there was a couple where we weren't, we weren't bad. Mm. You know, the year we lost the car. Yeah, we just fell away at the end. Didn't yeah, we, really? the, the, yeah. But the year we, we lost the League Cup final, we were in all four competitions mm-hmm. looking pretty good, but mm. the League Cup final just yeah, killed yeah. us. But, but anyway, the, the exact Example yeah. was around, I don't know, maybe 2008, 2009, went to Old Trafford. I think Adebayor scored with that sort of handball goal that it was allowed, but, you know, he kind of hit it in with his hand, I think. But then it was, we lost 2-1, I think Owen Hargreaves scored a penalty. But there was a bit at the end when we had sort of lost the game, but and the final whistle had gone, but we stayed in as the away end. We were locked in for about five, five, seven minutes, but we stayed in about 20 minutes, 25 minutes singing, we love you Arsenal, we do. And we just kept singing that. And it was, there was defiance there. There was pr- like pride that we, we, we were proud of our players. We were proud. I mean, some people started to turn on, on Wenger maybe then, but generally people were still proud that, you know, we're not, we haven't got the money City, or the City were just starting to spend, but United and Chelsea have. But we're still competing with them. We're proud, you know. Fine, we haven't won the league, but fucking hell, we've given it a good go. And sorry for swearing, but we've given it a good go. And I remember, I still, you know, sometimes like if I think about that, and I really, it sounds a bit weird, but if I if I close my eyes and really think, I can still hear that. I can still ring. I know I was row, I think twenty three. I still remember the who was behind me. I remember who was in front of me, and I remember just absolutely singing my heart out for about 25 minutes. Yeah, non-stop. Do you non-stop, remember it? Non-stop, non-stop. Yeah, mate, yeah. yeah, non-stop. 
Exactly, and it was just pride, and we were loud, you know, Sky Sports, when they were doing their thing from the studio, you could still hear us, when, uh, uh, I think it was Darren Fletcher, and giving his interview at, for Sky, so I watched the game again, doing his interview for Sky, you could hear us from the tunnel, you could hear us, and it was just, yeah. so for that, that era, for me, that summed it up, that we were... We weren't spending big in wages and we weren't spending uh, in transfer fees, but we were competing. And then, yeah, the last kind of 2012 onwards, it, it's, you know, the FA Cups have been great. And, you know, when we did our podcast with David Seaman, he just sitting sitting with him for half an hour and you realise how FA Cups are just massive. But, you know, we haven't competed in the league and Arsene Wenger has spent money, but you know, I don't, you know whether he spent it well is, is is another debate. But if you think of his sort of since 2012, his best signings, you wouldn't think of the the ones that have cost money. You probably think of Santi Cazorla at 11 million, Olivier Giroud at 12 million. In terms of what they've done, you know, value wise, what they've done for the club, you wouldn't really put Shaka, Mustafi, Sanchez, even Özil to a certain extent. You wouldn't because we haven't won leagues or we haven't done anything with them up there so I think yeah maybe he has struggled maybe you know there's been a lot of money in the game um but it, it it's I don't know I think I think it's more well, you you're right about younger minds coming in with younger ideas I don't necessarily think it's linked to the money because he proved no. in those 2008 2009 years that he can probably do it without money you know a Bue Bentner um Danielson you know we we call it the banter era but if you actually look at the league tables we didn't do too bad he was getting the best yeah. out of average players oh, but yeah. can not get... just that as well sorry Axe to interrupt no, no, go, go, go. not just that he was fantastic in the markets mm, yeah. he knew the markets he knew the French market these last few years has been absolutely booming with talent mm. there is so much talent we in have the French market players like Usman Dembele and yeah. all players like that have been and gone mm-hmm. to big clubs and I'm not being funny we need to position ourselves at the moment where we were them kind of players should be coming to us before they go to Real yeah. Madrid and that yeah. is unfortunate yeah. but yeah. That is where he used to have that, but he's lost that as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, it's yeah, it's just baffling, isn't it? Those those guys, those guys, people like Mbappe, Dembele, Umtiti, all those kind of young guys. There was once upon a time they probably would have walked across the channel to actually yeah. come and work yeah. for us in Wenger, you know. They would have yeah. swam the channel just to freaking work but with it. But just, now we're, you know. And the, the, the Mbappe thing is, is, is an interesting point because, yeah, 10 years ago, you, a player like that, you would have said, you know, play your career here. You can win, win it all with us. You can help us win our first Champions League, etc. But from what you hear, the Mbappe kind of, uh, stuff when we were linked with him was all about spend two or three years here, learn, learn more. And then you'll get your move to Real Madrid, because that was when he was rumoured with Real Madrid more than PSG. And you'll get your move to Real, to, to, to Real Madrid. So we're not like, you know, we're not even hiding about being a stepping stone. <laughs> we're, we're not even, we're not even, we've accepted that for young players, young big talents, we are a stepping stone. You know, they are going to come here, the Cesc Fabregas of the world, they are going to come here and then they are going to leave. You know, where I, I know we've, we've kept Urza and obviously that's great, but, Generally, I think that's what's happened. And you just think, when did that change? I mean, yeah, it changed over certain years. But for me, it's a little bit like, has it kind of happened overnight? Because I swear we weren't... It wasn't this bad a few years ago, was it? We were still signing. The, the, thing, the thing is, though, Ax, it just strikes me as they don't think he is the person no, that will no. develop them to where they need to be. Forget yeah. the fact that we're a selling, we're a selling club. We're selling, he, they don't think that under his tutelage, mm. they are better served you know, learning from him. Yeah. They're better served learning from, you know, Pep or yeah. whoever it is. Yeah. You know what I mean? And well, that's, that's, that's the heartbreaking thing. Yeah. And, about and, it. and you've seen that with, uh, Willock, the, the one that left. Was yeah. It, the, the one that left. left. Yeah. Chris. Yeah. 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 And now, yeah, Chrissy Willock. Yeah, and we lost the guy, yeah. lost the guy in the last window to Barcelona. Uh, yeah. Reese Nelson looks like he's not signing a contract. So these young yeah. players don't really, you know, players like Alex Awobi have, have stayed because they got a chance in the first team, and Alex Awobi won't be in the first team for a top six club anywhere. So, now, let, 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 before you before you go, I've, I had a, I had a, you, you've just jogged my memory about that. I wanted to ask you guys. Look, um, first of all, I don't think there's a lot of joined up thinking going on at the club because, on the one hand, 
you know, we brought in Ven Mislistar and we, we tried to get Dembele and we tried to get Mbappe before and whatever. And we've, we're, you know, we're talking about bringing in young players. But this January, this January window, we bought guys with no resale value. Don't know how that one works. You know, it yeah. doesn't seem to be sort of like, you know, there, there seems to be two schools of thought going Desperate, mate. Secondly, Desperate. Uh, yeah, desperate. And secondly, to, to your point, Akil, um, Iwobi was chased, was wanted. I know this for a fact. Iwobi was wanted by Pep at Man City. Now, we've seen how Iwobi's regressed from where he first started in the first thing to where he is now. Imagine players like Iwobi or Bellerin or Maitland Niles or, or Rob Holding or Chambers under somebody like Pep or Poch or Klopp or whoever. Yeah. yeah. Um, you I, know, I, we wouldn't I, be talking about them in the same uh, vein as we are that, now. Raheem Sterling linked with Arsenal. Raheem. Uh, exactly. We we City fans were happy to see him go. That when it's, if he swapped with Sanchez, they don't want to yeah. let him go now. You know, exactly. They don't want to let him go now. But they've even got players like Zinchenko coming through. Mm. Exactly. And he but, apparently apparently Wenger wanted him. Yeah, but I'll tell you, you you made a good an interesting point, and this this is why I genuinely believe that the wheels have been in motion regarding this summer for a while because we we spoke before about that resale value of the the Aubameyang signing. Um, in my eyes, I mean, just by going from Arsene Wenger from the last sort of 10 years, that's not an Arsene Wenger signing. And I'm personally not of the opinion that Wenger would have sold Giroud or Walcott. I'm, 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 I really don't think he would have. I, I believe that they're preparing to, to... They've wiped the slate clean. They've brought in someone like Bamiang for, for three or four years. He's at the peak of his, of his game. He is at the top of his level. We've always had players like Lacazette and who's 25, Ozil 25, Alexis 25. They're all coming in with one more move left in them, aren't they? And and Aubameyang isn't like that. So yeah. that's what's given me a bit of a thought process that maybe the club, regardless, were going to look to change in the summer. But because of the yeah. way it's going now, I think everything's being accelerated. And I think that they're, they're going to have to lay down the law now to make sure it does happen. But I do think that something behind the scenes there has, has drastically changed because, like I say, we, we have got rid of even players like Coquelin, Like I do, I don't. I'm surprised that he left the club because I'm Wenger's shown a lot of trust in him over the years. He brought him through, obviously. He oh, had he just deals. signed a new contract as well. Yeah, Coquelin, exactly. Giroud, mate, yeah. When all the French players, Koscielny, sat together, was it? It was only a year ago. So do you think? Do you think he got? Do you think he got an idea that actually he's not going to be in in the, in the fort? sort of the, the new regime or whatever is going to happen it, in the future. It, sound, it sounds warped, yeah. but I do believe that these guys will, like Sven and, and, and Raul Solani, they will be working with the manager. It, football's different now. It, it, there's like six different roles behind the scenes, whereas before there was just one. Do you know what I mean? Arsenal would do it all. They'd have David Dean to help him out. I think these yeah. guys, whoever the manager is that comes in, these two guys, along with Gazidis, will have huge, huge, huge input. And I think they will be the ones selecting who they're going to be working with because they're going to be working hand in hand, side by side with every decision and they've got to believe in it. And um, I think they've got some sort of idea of the of the type of players and, and, and the way that the club want to operate. And I hope they have got a plan and a long-term plan because I'd rather see that and we can invest in it and get behind it because... I mean, in the transfer market, is I know it's another thing, but I don't think we've had a plan for the last 10 years. I think we've just sort of bought things, players off the whim, off the cuff. Yeah. We've got one here, yeah. one there. and yeah. Like, even this year, we've, we've got rid of all of... We've got no wide players at the club. We've got absolutely no wide players at the club. And now, all of a sudden, we're trying to play with width again. And it's just... It's baffling the way things have gone. But I, I do think that maybe this, these guys are sort of planning for the future and... When I mean the future, I mean literally three months' time. Yeah, and the, the other thing there is, you know, there was such a big deal made about, you know, last season with with with, with Arsene Wenger having one year left and then six months, four months, three months, and it was there was so much made about it. And Arsene Wenger himself has said, you know, that questions were asked, his own team were asking if he's in or out and all that, and it, the uncertainty wasn't good, and he admitted that. Which just makes you think that well, you've you've admitted it now. So are you going to make the same mistake again? I mean, some would argue I'll still always make the same mistake again. But you know, generally, people looking at that would be thinking, you're not going to make the same mistake again, are you? So then, what happens? You know, a lot of people 
did think that the two year deal was actually a bit of a smoke screen and he would he would go after one. You know, I know he's recently said he sees out contracts and stuff, but that's just because he's quite a proud man. And when he talks to the press, he's not going to give them anything. You know, he's going to give strong interviews. And, and, and some of the, the interviews he's done have been have been quite good. If you look at them just from a forget what he's achieving on the field, just from an interview stage. And, and he, he's handling the pressure well on that stage. But, you know, Ooh, Wenger. Wenger, yeah, in terms of, I mean, he, well, well, his interview not, after yeah. the game was, yeah. was, was quite, was quite. But he, you don't feel that company. he is under pressure. You don't think he's been pressured from above so you know he's he's handled his interviews well, for I, many no, many years. I, I think you, you I look think at, he is yeah. i think he is under for the first time in I his life here he's maybe he is under a bit of pressure you know josh Cronkey's here for three months josh Cronkey's in the training ground ivan Zidas moved to the training ground i know okay maybe ivan because of the way ivan got employed maybe it's difficult for him but to have Josh Cronkey suddenly snooping around and stuff like that, having all these new guys here, I and mean, if, you know, if Abamyang and Mikatarian, you know, that they know Sven, you know, Sven had a deal, or, or, or certainly had a had a part to play, uh, Gazidas and Co in Dortmund Airport, all that kind of stuff. That that to me is pressure. That that to me is pressure. Or if it's not pressure, it's because they all know that actually this was a smokescreen and it was only going to be one year, and the only reason was because. Arsenal weren't ready. Arsenal weren't ready last season to, to, mm. to change managers because the infrastructure structure wasn't there. But it is, you know, in hindsight, I, I, I would love to know or in, in five, six years, if we ask Arsenal Wenger that, do you wish you left after that Chelsea, cup, you know, cup final, you beat in the champions? I, I, I can't, I can't think he wouldn't regret that now. I just can't see it. We're sitting sixth out the FA Cup. Tough tie in in the Europa League, looking like we won't make the Champions League again. You can't tell me you can't regret that. You know, you just can't. You know, I think he'll be up for the Man Booker Prize whenever he brings out that book. But um, you know, okay, let's let's, let's say then that there is pressure from above. Um, I've you know, I've heard from certain people that, um, as you just said, uh, the reason why they didn't um, chop Wenger when they had the chance or not chopping but you know the reason why they renewed not, his contract not really, yeah, is be- yeah. yeah is because you know, Gazidis didn't have a proper plan in place yeah. uh, Gazidis and, and Josh Cronkett didn't have a proper plan in place and now as you say you know it seems like they're formulating a plan thing is again it comes down to who's going to push the button who's going to tap Wenger on the shoulder well unless it, when is unless, it going to happen unless there's an agreement already in place with him I, I don't know I don't know. I, I, you know, I, I just, I, I, don't, I, I don't know. I, I, I yeah, I, I, I you, know, I've, 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 you know, I would say it now that if, if we could agree something with Arsene Wenger, you know, be an ambassador for the club, be around the club as an ambassador, so you're not involved day to day and let someone else get on with it, take it. And I know people have said it needs to be a clean break, it needs to be a fresh, but I, I don't think it does anymore. I think maybe a few years ago it did, because pe- the people's argument was that if we start maybe losing a few games or, or, or things like that, then suddenly people are going to start, the cameras are going to pan to Arsene Wenger and stuff like that. But at the moment, I don't think they are, because we are six in the league. Like it's not like Arsenal Wenger's doing a lot better. So actually, I don't think the cameras would pan to Arsenal. Wenger. I don't think fans would want Arsenal Wenger back. And 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 if if a manager is doing worse than six, if they're seventh or eight, then they might they probably shouldn't be managing Arsenal Football Club. Maybe they'll be given a bit of time. But if if after two years, three years, they're still seventh or eight, they shouldn't be here anyway. So you know, I I think I think it's a lot easier this this year to kind of we've got the infrastructure in place if Wenger sticks around as an ambassador I don't think it's going to have that much of a negative influence anymore I think it's just it's a lot easier to do this summer I, I, I ask I, I'm going to ask you guys a question now um, whenever he goes whether it's this summer or next what kind of coach I don't want names this, this, this per se I don't really care for the names more importantly to me is what kind of coach do you think needs to come in to start the process of getting us back to where we need to be so uh, was what kind of coach would you like to see hired by the club I'd like a coach who pays ridiculous attention to detail I think that football has become so technical and and us as fans we often sit there and just look at it 
and think, yeah, go and press him, tackle him, run there, do that. But I, it's really opened my eyes. I mean, I, was, I don't want to allude to Pep again, but I must admit that Pep's Barcelona and Pep's Bar Munich for me were the two best teams I saw at the Emirates and, and Pep City the other night. It just made me realise that for every scenario in the game, and, and, and I've seen videos of him in training uh, uh, at uh, Bayern Munich, and the way he, he, he coaches and, and gets the best out of his players, he, he, he's not just... Uh, he doesn't just motivate. He he he's he's so knowledgeable that he he, he teaches players on the spot on the job. It's it's like it's, it's actually crazy, and you see the way that players like Otamendi overnight develop uh, an understanding of the game that something that he's not had ever when I've seen him play before, and and, and all players like that. So the, the kind of manager I want would be someone in Pep sort of ilk who pays extreme attention to detail who. He's very, very knowledgeable, who is very passionate about the, the game. And, and and obviously, the majority of managers are passionate about the game regardless. But I think that football is now becoming, years and years ago, teams like Bolton could get away with it against teams like Arsenal at the time because they could sort of play it. But now it don't happen anymore as much. It really don't. And I know we can got a good result against City the other night and, and things do happen. But it's so, so rare now. It's so rare. And... I just want someone that is going to give us a vision, uh, a style of play, something that we can get behind. And whether we like it or not, not everyone is going to enjoy what the new manager wants to do at the club. Everyone's going to have favourite players that are going to get bombed out. Everyone's going to have players they don't like that are going to be playing every week. And we might see a better side to them, but that's going to happen. But I'm just so willing and so ready to accept the change. I don't really care about the style of it. I just want... A direction. I want to be able to look at something on the pitch and go, do you know what? This Arsenal team are going to turn up, we're going to play this formation, we're going to do this and when we play a different opponent we'll play another way. Because you can see how City were so, so prepared for us, right down to the tee every single scenario. They knew it would be narrow even the first goal for instance Bernardo Silva is hugging that touchline the whole time until he's active he cuts inside and scores. That's not that is planning that is literally on the training field saying to them, look, Arsenal do this, we're going to do this to counteract that. You need to be aware if they, if, if they break, but this is your job, you stay out there. When you get it, there you go, yours has your licence to come inside. And that's what I want to see, something that I can see happening and developing in front of my eyes week in, week out, and actually understand it and get behind it. And like I said, if it don't work, it don't work. But at least I'm trying to see something because it's so muffled at the moment, mate, that I've I don't know what's going on. So, yeah, that's what I'd want. Some, someone like that. Someone I can just see what they're implementing and they're, they're intelligent and, and creative and, and they, they enjoy the game of football. Um, Alex, the reason why I asked the question about which kind of coaches you'd like to see come in, I, I decided to sort of like just sort of like root around uh, the, the internet and just look at um, players. What, what players, players that have recently left, what have they said in their first interviews at their new clubs? And Alex Oxley Chamber talked about intensity. The reason why he, he kind of gravitated towards Klopp is because of an intensity. Um, uh, Coquelin said that um, the, the Marcelino, he organises the team well. He knew exactly where he needed to be. He, he gives them meticulous instruction, you know, so they know exactly what is what, what, what he wants from them, from each individual player. I went onto the Belgian website to where um, Chuba Akpom has gone on loan and he was talking again about how the manager tells them exactly what they need to do, where they need to be, where is the space they need to run into. Again, if I, I'm sure if I went to Angers' website where 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 Reno Adelaide is or somewhere else, you get the impression that where at Arsenal that the 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 the, the need to, to 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 understand things meticulously, that drilling that intensity and when we talk about intensity i'm not talking about passion i'm talking about you know knowing you know you know having it drilled into you day after day after day moment after moment after moment this is where we need you to be this is where the space is going to be if he runs here this is where we want you to run into all that kind of stuff that that kind of that's what i'm talking about intensity a lot of these players when they move to other clubs their first interviews are always asked about you know the, the difference between where they are now and where they are before and all these guys, they're all saying they're kind of like the same thing. So that's why I'm asking, you know, 
Wenger seems to, or the coaching doesn't seem to be as as meticulous as this new breed of, of, of coaches. And with that being said, what kind of coach do you want to see come into here? What kind of coach do you think we need to bring us up to a level? Um, for me, it, it, it's someone who can improve players, um, sort of tactically and even technically. Um, someone who, you know, has that sort of man management sort of ability. I think, I think what's, what has happened is that a lot of these players have got so comfortable with the same voice. And, mm-hmm. and, and, you know, even when we looked at that banter era or a few years ago, we had a lot of international players, right? So a lot of them were going off every, you know, couple of months and they were hearing a different voice. They were, they were picking up things from other players. They were picking up other things from other coaches, other managers. And I think sometimes they brought that back to Arsenal. And then when they were on the field, they took that onto the field. You know, over, over the last sort of three, four years, players we've had, players like Walcott, Chamberlain, even Kieran Gibbs before he left, suddenly their England cap started to just, they, well, they vanished, didn't they? Chamberlain had had a few, but they started to just sort of vanish. Players like Cocker, the players you you, you talked about, Cockerland, Gabriel, weren't in their international squads ever. So again, they got quite comfortable with that with that same voice, and I think that voice needs to be a man manager who's gonna improve players tactically and technically. I think that's that's the most important thing. I think it has to be someone with a bit of bit of pedigree around him, really. You know, I'm kind of. I love the, that romantic side of, of having a Patrick Vieira in or a, or someone like that because it, it could end up to be a Pep Guardiola. It could it could he could develop into that and, and or a Mikel Arteta. Like I, I get that, but I think at the moment these players need someone who's slightly more established, who's a strong voice, strong personality, who can really improve them. And you know when I say kind of scared them, I don't mean it in a you know boo sort of way. I mean it in a for their futures, you know, tonight again, we've, we've had, whenever you sort of listen to this, but in the last few days, we've had, you know, the newspaper saying that Arsene Wenger was told the players that you're, you're playing, you're, you're playing for your future at the moment, sort of thing. Not only his future, but you're playing for your own. And you just think, how much notice are they going to take from that? But if a new man comes in, suddenly it's, it's, you know, at the moment, there's players who, who have, seem to have the power. They just think that we'll be able to get a good contract elsewhere. Um, but a new manager who's just, you know, I, I think of that Raheem Sterling example, you know, he was on the fringes at Man City, he was, you know, I, I'm not sure if anyone would have paid top, top dollar for him at top, top wages, but a manager's come in, has got him motivated, has got him kind of scared for his future, and suddenly he's had a great season and, and you know, a lot of clubs will take him now. So I just think it needs to be someone like that. You know, as as, as I said, as much as I would, uh, you know, if a Patrick Vieira came in, I would love it. You know, I would love our, one of our own sort of thing. But I'm just, I just think it has to be someone who, you know, a bit more established. Yeah, no, yeah. And you also got to be able to connect with the players as well, mm. I think. I have got yeah, a question um, for you guys, actually, go as well. Go right, on. just to turn it, I'll play host for a second. But... You know, in that banter era, I know I've talked a lot about that banter era purely because I've been looking at it a lot and looking at. It was actually when, uh, when, when, when Theo Walcott left and was was can kind of testify because he's the same. But when people were kind of maybe being critical of his of his goal scoring record or his match big match record, I went through every Theo Walcott season to see how many goals he scored and and the, who he scored against and all that. But as I was doing that, I kind of saw in that banter era where Arsenal finished, what we did. And I guess my question is is for you that it's always been a case of, of the players having to work work things out on their own. You know, I mean, our man Traore, when he left, talked about that when you've made a mistake, no one actually tells you you've made a mistake. You're, you're kind of, you're expected to work it out for yourself. So... It kind of makes me think that when we had that banter era, players like Denilson, Diaby, Diaby was a great, great player by the way, but you know, players like that, Abue, they were obviously, they were maybe overachieving with them, but players with like Ozil, Sanchez, all these players that we've bought that are, are Mustafi, World Cup winners, Shaka, captain for his national side, 
they're underachieving. Why is that? The coaching hasn't really changed. You've had a couple of personnel changes, but really that hasn't changed. So what happened? Why were we having maybe slightly less technical and less less players with ability overachieving, but really good world-class players potentially underachieving? I don't know. Maybe it's because he could connect with you younger uh, the younger players more mm-hmm. you know um it doesn't uh, i suppose it's easy to instill confidence well not easier but maybe you know he 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 found a way of instilling confidence in them you know taking from 18 19 and saying look i'm going to i'm going to i'm going to give you this shirt number you're going to be in the first team play just you know play with freedom play with exuberance you know uh, you know show the people how, how technical you are whereas with with, with with more established world level players who are coming from other teams where like for instance Alexis coming from Barcelona he's coming from a different environment where the standards are you know he wasn't even the best player he was surplus to a requirement so he's coming from a different do you know what I mean he's coming from a different yeah, setting yeah. a different yeah. atmosphere and maybe that's prob- that's that, that might be something to do again um a Mesut Ozil coming from Real Madrid where the standards are the pressure to achieve is is all consuming it's suffocating whereas here you know you've got an 18 year old you're taking a guy from La Masia you're taking uh, Nazri who had a good season at Marseille or wherever it was he came from you know you're bringing Colo Torre or Alex Song from out of nowhere and you're giving him you're coming he's coming from Belgium you're giving him a shirt number and saying I'm making you my defensive midfielder I'm putting faith in you we're letting um um you know we're, Jibbo, we're letting um, Diara, yeah. Go, yeah and all those guys go and I'm putting faith in you you know and I feel that even at your young age you're showing some sort of super intelligent super technical skill that the, you as a core I think you can achieve great things you can't do that with it you can't do that you can't do that you just can't you can't do that with a guy coming from a different surrounding, I, I, I think. You know, I mean, you need to. You know, they're coming. From, yeah, I don't know. What do you reckon was? I just think football's changed drastically. I think it's changed. I mm, think never. you only have to look. You look at centre backs of ten years ago compared to. I know it's changed, strange, but it's just an example. At the highest level, there's not really. You want, you're going to struggle to find a new John Terry. You the, the new the modern centre backs, even players like Toby Alderweireld and players like that. That they're so technically sound. They're so, and everything about the game now has become so with the, the the upgrades in technology and the data and the stats. And football has become an incredible game when it comes to the finer details now. Whereas, and also I think you made a good point about the, coming from the bigger clubs where they probably are being coached and managed in a certain way to all of a sudden having complete sort of poetic license which is great in a, in a sense and it has it's done wonders for Wenger over the years but there comes a stage where I think football's developed and, and, and footballers themselves are different and they're not the same as they used to be they can't it sounds strange but they, there's not many out there now that can think for themselves there's a hell of a lot of intelligent footballers and they're wonderful to watch and that you can see their brain and, and Ozil's one of them but he needs to be in a system that is implemented that will get the best out of Ozil and he will know that when he looks up there's players making runs to his left there's players making runs to his right there's come on coming short he knows who's doing what but it's almost like I mean and what sums it up the most for me is watching Alexis Sanchez for the past 12 months he just done what he wanted yeah. he just literally done what he wanted and I'm not slating him for it I'm saying that that is an it's sort of the the old. I don't way. think he respected Wenger. I don't think he respected no, exactly, Wenger's exactly. philosophers. But, but I think that know. also, I think where that come from is the fact that he never had real instruction. He, he never really had. Mm. Whereas I think someone like Jose might say to him, Alexis, if you keep dropping back, mate, you're off. Yeah, you're, you're coming off, fella. Like this is what I want you to do. This way, I want you to play. But like I was saying earlier, even I think Jose is now struggling. So I think football yeah. moves so quickly and. There will never be another manager at a club for 21 years. And I think that to, to see a manager last six years at a club now will be fantastic. Mm. But I think people have got to accept that football is a different game now and, and, and everything from the levels of the, the abilities of players to the way things are analysed and, 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 and the data collection that I was saying and players are wearing these things that monitor their heart rate, how many yards they sprint, everything is so... And, and, and then they train so hard and there's so much 
evidence of things that are happening that is being scrutinised so much that I don't think you can just send 11 players out anymore and say, these are your strengths. I want you to try and try and play to them. Go on, boys. You, you go out there and enjoy yourselves. And then when things start going wrong and you pl- come up against a, a regimented plan, they you tend to struggle. And because and mm-hmm. they know... They've they've watched what your players do. They know what you're going to do. Let's say they know Alexis is going to come inside, so they don't they don't need to worry about that. Then they leave someone on that left on that right wing and take advantage of it. It's like we've seen the same things happen for years, and teams are obviously analysing us. But well, I mean, we've we've said for a long time that that, that that we don't sort of plan for games and things like that. So I just think football's ever changing. I think it's a great question, Axe, but I think he, he used to the way football used to be and the level of players he had, I think that he could get away with allowing that, that, that freedom and that, that enjoyment. But I think now football's changed so much that it's, it's game over for that sort of, that sort of style of management. I'll tell you, can I just go back to that, to your question, Alex? I think the reason possibly why Leonardo Jardim is probably at the top of the bookies yes. uh, charts is because he's the only manager really in the top five league that has got a team making a team punch above their weight in terms of he brings in young players, you know, he goes to other French clubs and he brings in their young talent and he nurtures them. He doesn't just let them play. He nurtures them. He drills them. He's easy. You know, he makes sure that they understand exactly what he wants from them. So when they come out onto the training and onto the playing field, they know exactly what they're meant to be doing. He's the only one I can think of who's, you know, in France or Germany or, or Spain or here or Italy that is actually producing results with a bloody young team where it hasn't cost him millions and hundreds and hundreds of millions to actually develop. Do you know what I mean? So maybe yeah. that's maybe that's part of the reason why Jardim is so highly thought of and maybe the reason why the book is thinking that he's favourite because he's the only one that really is doing what Wenger did but modern, but he's doing it in a modern way. Like as was said, you know, you know, he's, you know, he's coaching them in a certain way that, you know, you, you understand your positions and, you know, he's modern. He's a modern Wenger in a way. Mm. Yeah, I mean, you feel Wenger's tried to change, but he just hasn't been able to do it, you know. Yeah. Um, I think sort of the Rob Holding signing was kind of him trying to go back to maybe what he was good at before, but with the pressure now, it's just... You know, it, it, a lot of these youngsters, a lot of these youngsters, actually, a lot of these youngsters are regressing mm. under him. You know, he's not really, yeah. really not developing them. Yeah. That's a shame. Yeah. yeah. I mean, um, he, 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 one of the th- talks he gave, he, he kind of said about, about sort of, I think it was talking about Rob Holding, didn't mention him, but he said that, you know, you know a young player's going to make a mistake, but, and you know he might cost you six, seven points a season, but, if he plays for 12 years, he'll win you 20 points. So you actually win. But you just feel that he does believe that, but now he's just not, he's just, he's not going to do that. He's not going to risk it because of the pressure and, and is so big and football has changed, which is why he's kind of, he's doing something he's not particularly comfortable in. You know, it, it's, it's astonishing how we hear stories about uh, about Mustafi and 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 not quite getting on with 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 people and and and, and potentially even Wenger and not happy because of his you know his wife and his kid are, are are away and all that sort of stuff. But he still keeps playing, you know. And you just think it, you've got Rob Holding there. I know he's not, you know. But if you really believe that, yeah, it, Rob will cost you points, but long run he, he'll gain you points. But you're not doing it. It just shows I think, that you know what, actually, identities you know what, actually, somewhere. Yeah. Go on. You know what, actually, you could look at one player from each of the top, the other top five teams and think, oh, he's not really all that. But the manager gets the most out of him. You look at Eric Dyer. People, I hear a lot of Arsenal fans slate Eric Dyer. Oh, he's rubbish. He doesn't have a kick the ball. He's immobile. Pochettino gets the most out of him. You know, he plays him where he can get the most out of him, where he's best suited. He says to him, you don't need to move about a lot. You stay here. Split defence when you need to move into a back three when you need to cover. You know when we're when we've got the ball, just cover. You know, keep it simple. Out ball, keep it simple. You know, every team. James Milner. Nobody likes James Milner. Nobody likes James Milner. But play him on the left, play him in the middle. He'll give you a performance. Klopp's getting the most out of him. You can go around each of the other teams. 
you know, and, and, well, and Conte, pick one of their Moses. players that you think, yeah. Yeah, Moses, exactly. Moses, yeah. You Marcus know? Alonso, like, there's yeah. loads of them. You know what I mean? And, but we're, with Wenger, we're not getting the same. We're not get, He's not getting the same out of these players. I'd say the last thing I want to cover really is the news of that, um, you know, we, we, we talked about players and player power and whatnot. You know, there's a lot of rumblings around, you know, going around Arsenal fandom about how certain players, if Wenger don't leave, they will leave, you know. Um, and today, I don't, uh, this week, I don't know if you heard it, but apparently Hector Bellerin is now, you know, wondering, considering his future at the club, you know, and apparently Juventus are doing the groundwork to try and get him in the summer. We've, 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 we've rebuffed um, Barcelona in the past and so on and so forth. Do you think if we don't get Champions League football, guys, we're going to have to sell at least two of our most bankable assets. No, I don't think we will. I think we got. I think we got enough in the enough in the locker by the way we've acted this season, which is part of my sceptics that he's definitely off because, like I said, we've 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 made profit on transfers this season. We've slashed a wage bill. Maybe that's in preparation for possibly missing out next season and, and still competing. And we, when you look at it, we've done all right to, mm, to just, lose Alexis. Going I don't know if we've I'm not sure the we've slashed the wage bill. Yeah, I don't think we have. Yeah. Because you're, you're, yeah. you're thinking Alexis, but you're thinking of Alexis on his old wage, which was about only about 130. So Mkhitaryan has come in for, what, close to 200. So you're, you've actually increased it by selling Sanchez, getting Mickey in by about 60 grand. Theo was on about 140. Abamyang again will be on about 200 or so. So you've actually, I know Olivier Giroud, I know Olivier Giroud, Gabriel, yeah, all, more, yeah. all left, but then but Lacazette, on 350. yeah, Lacazette came yeah. in for about 170, I think, and Ozil, uh, yeah. Ozil has got Gabriel, Coquelin, Giroud's yeah. wage probably in his rise. So yeah. it's, I'm not sure we have really, yeah. And that's the thing, if we don't get, if we don't get those other income streams, i.e. the Champions League money or as we said, you know, the commercial team, I'm sure we'll talk about it in another one. Just just, I, I know we're wrapping up. Just, just, just yeah. on your point there about Bellerin yeah. and, and all that. It, it, you know, as fans, we're kind of thinking, okay, it's, it's going to be a new start maybe in the summer, certainly summer after if, if, if Arsenal Wenger stays one more year. And, and we're all kind of thinking about it. So you would think as a professional player and, and as a player at the club, you might actually look at it as, yeah, this could be the opportunity, or not opportunity, but it could be the right moment for me to potentially move on as well. And that's someone like Bellerin thinking, I, I don't think it's necessarily related to Arsene Wenger. I don't think it's, it, I mean, you know, with fans, he's he's having a hard time with some but, fans. You know, but, but, you know, these could be a factors, you know. All these yeah, little things could all, build little, up to one thing. Things could yeah, just, yeah. They could just tell you that, actually, you know yeah. what, maybe it's, just it, maybe it's the right time for me to move on, you know. Alex Oxley Chamberlain felt it was the right time for him to move on for for several reasons, but I think a lot of these players might be thinking the same, you know. Um, it, it's all about tying them down, I guess. I mean, with Bellerin's a bit different, but with someone like Ramsey, it's I think Ramsey will either commit and stay forever, or he'll think this is the time to move on. So, and the I thing think, is, the thing with Ramsey is that people are banking on the fact that his his agent is moving you know, agencies or firms or whatever, and we're mm. just waiting for that. We hope that's the case. Yeah. We hope that's the case. Do you know what I mean? Because if it ain't, then, you know, we're looking at, we're going to have to shift him yeah. in the summer. Yeah. If he doesn't sign up. We're going to have to. We've got no choice. We can't go for another. I mean, was you said it in previous ones, we cannot afford to go for another summer of uncertainty. Yeah. No. Yeah. No. I mean, uh, but, if, but, if, but sorry, but Ozil, yeah. but Ozil committing and Aubameyang signing indicates to me that they've been given a clear plan of what's going to happen. I don't know, obviously, we signed them initially and they were probably given a clear plan, but I genuinely do think that with the guy, like I said, the, with the guys in the background, that I think that they know change is definitely coming and, and, and Arsenal are positioned as a seventh, seventh or sixth most valuable club in world football. We are in a position to kick on. And we're doing it far too late and we are just about to miss the boat. But if we can do it now, there is a chance, especially with the players we've still got at the club. We are still Arsenal Football Club. We are still the Arsenal. Devil's Advocate, just very briefly there. It's like me and you have swapped places was tonight, isn't it? But just playing yeah. Devil's Excuse Advocate there. 
the players you mentioned, um, uh, Meza Ozil, did he get the did he get the offers? Did he really get the offers that he he wanted on on that sort of big money? Has he signed because actually uh, there were offers, but not maybe firm offers, and actually he he felt he's loved here, likes London, and and he kind of. Oh, I'm playing devil's advocate, by the way. I'm not saying I believe this, but took the easier route. Has Abamyang was Abamyang just desperate to get out of Dortmund? Is there been a reason why Abamyang hasn't gone to Madrid when he's been linked, or gone to Man City, or, or hasn't moved? And, and and was he just desperate to get out? Was Mkhitaryan just so miserable with Jose Mourinho? He just wanted to go anywhere, and 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 it happened that Sven was here, and and he could help the deal, and he was maybe forced into it a little bit. That's just me playing devil's advocate that, you know, do they know something or was it just they just had to make that move? You know, it, it, which it happens, you know, Sanchez felt he just had to make the move. He wasn't too bothered which, which side of Manchester he was going to. He just felt he had to make that move. Maybe it was the same for them. I don't know, but I'm just playing devil's advocate. I'll tell you what is um, interesting is, um, you know, the people in the upstairs in the hierarchy, there's a couple of people that we've often derided in the past that we are now laying our hopes on. You know, you think of Gazidis for many a year. We, we, you know, have, he, we at the AST, we have this sort of Gazidis thing because we have a few of our board members actively tweeting who, who think he's said stuff that he hasn't quite Men delivered, and yeah. delivered or, or lied, and 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 I'm I'm looking at it the other way. I'm thinking there's a man who's actually wanting to change things, and and why why are we? Should we not applaud him? Should we not get yeah. behind him? And this is this is me saying it, by the way. This is me, who's someone who loves Arsene Wenger, has always loved Arsene Wenger, still loves Arsene Wenger. Has lots of Arsene Wenger signed memorabilia on my wall, in my sort of memorabilia wall, and and all that sort of stuff. But even I know it, it, it it's over now. It's time. But, like, you know, uh, even if I'm saying that, and then there's some people who are just thinking, nah, I hate the club, hate the board, hate everything. And even this Josh Cronkey kind of being that's here. That's what you're saying, yeah. Again, uh, that's, if you, if, that's a good if you thing, listen right? to Yeah. If you listen to his podcast, he did a podcast recently, American podcast. Really? It's the Watch podcast. Oh, right. And w- w- one really key uh, passage in that podcast was, um, he was given. He was the. I think he's the owner of Denver Nuggets basketball team. Anyway, they had a, uh, a legendary coach called George Carl. Coach, he was just being given coach of the year. He got them to the playoffs in all his eight and a half seasons. You know, he got a whole load of young guys in, young players in, and he was doing really well. And everyone thought that he'd go into bigger. That they were going to kick on again to bigger and better things. Josh Kroenke came in there and decided. I think you know, he decided actually they needed a change of direction. And he sacked off, um, effectively sacked off George Carl, this legendary coach. Now, that could be just a case of him coming in there and wanting to flex his muscles and show that, you know, you know, I'm the boss here, I'm the daddy. But it could also, just listening to him, he decided that it was a hard, it was a tough decision. But he decided he, decided he needed to do that because he felt that the club weren't really um, go. They, they just needed to go in a different direction. Um we're coming, he's coming here now. And the first, the first initial, the initial consensus between, from the fans was daddy's boy. Doesn't know anything about football, this, that, the other. How's he going to, how's he gotten on the board? You know, he's, he has, doesn't meet the uh, diversity criteria and so on and so forth, blah, blah, blah. We've heard all the, the I might have been party to it as well. I might have added a few words myself, but it just, it just seems odd that. It is interesting now that he's become. It's almost now becoming a new hope amongst yeah, it's fans. It's mad. It's mad. You know? I mean, it is mad, isn't it? At the AST, we've been calling for Stan Kroenke to engage with us to engage. He's potentially via Josh starting to well, not engaging, but starting to take an interest, maybe. So why are we why are we rejecting that? Are we mm. you know we say we have a stubborn manager who, who who's set in his ways, but then uh, as fans are we set in our ways if we're not if we're if we're that stubborn that we actually think you know what actually Cronkies no no we just want you out it doesn't matter no mm. no Josh taking an interest here wanting to change nah nah it doesn't matter that makes us just as stubborn as the manager you yeah. know maybe yeah. maybe we're more, all more like Arsenal awesome than we think. Mate, um, the, the way I'd summarise it is I personally think that. Arson and Stan have been winning the battles, but I think Gazidis and uh, Josh might be just about to win the war. This is it. A new hope, hopefully. A new hope. Fingers mm-hmm. crossed. Fingers crossed. I think that's a good place to wrap it up, guys. We've gone over about 
bloody hell was a good conversation I thought you know uh, we could talk about it for ages and ages and ages um, but yeah here we are right so I want to thank my two erstwhile colleagues Akil you can catch him on Twitter at 10 Akil good you thank you very much sir no problem thank you enjoyed it and also was you can catch him on Twitter at was the Guna. thank you very much was Thanks for the therapy, boys. <laughs> uh, I, I do feel a bit better actually getting it out. Yeah. Oh. Cathartic, I think, is the mm. common word that's used there yeah. nowadays. But I'm, I'm sure your host. A trip to Brighton will, will bring me back to life. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 we're, we're going to win. Come on, Arsenal. Yeah. Yeah, indeed. All right. So I've been your host, Giles. Catch you on Twitter at ASC underscore Giles with two L's. It's been a good number of podcasts. Catch us on all the platforms. Subscribe, like, RT, comment, you know, help us. Everything. Everything. All right. Guna Ram Podcast. Up your Arsenal. Up your Arsenal. This episode of the Guna Ramble is sponsored by the new sporting betting app called Bookie. That's B O O K E E. Sign up using the promo code podcast, deposit, and bet £10 in multiple bets for a free £10 bet. Please bet responsibly. 